All right, now before I start this video, I want to make it abundantly clear that the PlayStation 5 is a phenomenal gaming console featuring a stellar library of exclusive titles, incredibly fast load times, backwards compatibility with the PlayStation 4, an innovatively designed controller, and the best upgrade yet, its improved cooling system, which no longer sounds like a jet engine like the PS4 Pro was. Anyway, as excited as I am to eventually make the upgrade myself, as of right now, I'm not looking to make the Switch, and I don't think you should either. Whoa, 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 whoa! Before you start a witch hunt, put your pitchforks down, and let's discuss the reasons why you shouldn't buy a PlayStation 5. Yet, anyway. Number one, the design. Now, if we're being totally honest here, when both the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X were revealed, neither one was praised for having a sleek and clean design, with one being compared to a character from Detroit Become Human, and the other being compared to a fridge. A literal fridge, which actually became a thing? Regardless, the PlayStation 5's design is quite bold and in your face, and the white side panels really stick out, and particularly when on display, for example, in a living room or in a media cabinet. Not to mention the console size, which stands vertically at an enormous 39 centimeters tall, which is a whopping 42% size increase from the PlayStation 4. However, as time's gone on, I've already grown accustomed to its unique design and color scheme. Nevertheless, for those of you who don't like its original design, PlayStation offers replacement side plates to switch up the look of your console. But here's the kicker, they cost $84 a pair. That's right, $84 a pair. And don't get me wrong, I understand that manufacturing costs can be quite expensive, and to be fair, maybe I just don't completely understand the true extent of it. But $84 for what's ultimately a piece of plastic to change the color of your console is absolutely insane. However, if the aesthetics of your console are that important to you, it's great to know that there's an option out there. Number two, the cost. Speaking of money, another important factor to consider is the price. Now in late 2020, the PlayStation 5 launched at $749, which was a steep price increase from the previous $560 price tag of the PS4 Pro. However, considering the console's drastic increase in performance, and the switch from internal hard drives to SSDs, as much as the price jump does hurt, the improvements made do justify the increased costs. In saying that, following the global shutdown to the well, you know, that particular virus, Sony further raised their prices to $799 and $649 for the digital edition. And look, compared to the astronomical resale price these consoles were selling for last year, an extra $50 isn't that much, but considering that pre-owned PlayStation 5s are now selling for the original $749 price tag, usually by the two-year mark, prices start to drop, which hasn't happened at all for the PlayStation 5. And not only have console prices increased, but game prices have too, with a brand new PlayStation 5 release setting you back anywhere between $110 to $125, which compared to the $100 price tag on new PlayStation 4 titles, which were already quite expensive, it definitely makes it much less affordable for the average consumer. In saying that, as more time passes, the cheaper these games will become. And if you're willing to wait, you'll be able to experience such incredible releases like Horizon Forbidden West, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, Elden Ring, God of War Ragnarok, and so much more without completely breaking the bank. And with more games releasing in the meantime, you have a larger catalogue of games to choose from. And then it comes down to weighing up what's more important to you. Playing these games at launch, or the money you'll save waiting it out until the next big sale. Number three, the storage. Another issue with the PlayStation 5 is the storage capacity. Now the PlayStation 5 boasts an 825 gigabyte internal SSD, which might sound like quite a lot, but once you take into account the PlayStation's operating system, you're only left with around 650 gigabytes of available storage. And considering modern releases such as NBA 2K23 and Call of Duty Warzone can take up to and over 100 gigabytes each, you can only really fit seven to eight games on the console, not to mention any storage for save data, the capture gallery, game patches, or even system updates. And I think we can all agree that wanting to play a game and realizing you have to re-download the entire 100 gigabyte file is one of the most inconvenient and frustrating first world problems. Especially if you're on that good old fashioned Australian internet and have to wait seven to eight hours for the download to complete. Yeah, it sucks. Just having that extra storage from a one terabyte drive instead would give you around an extra 150 gigabytes, which although isn't necessary, would definitely have been a nice addition in particularly at the current price point. In saying that, the PS5 does allow for an additional M.2 SSD to be installed internally, allowing you to further expand your storage if you deem it necessary. Despite the ability to make the upgrade, it won't come cheap. 
As an additional SSD with a read-write speed that's compatible with the console will set you back anywhere between $100 to $200. And also taking into account the cost of the console, the games, controllers, and online subscription service, you'd likely be spending over $1,000 before you even play your first game. And at that point, it's worth considering the alternative of upgrading to a low-end gaming PC instead. Number 4, the PS5 Pro. Finally, being that we're already two years into the PlayStation 5 console generation, rumours have already begun circulating about a PS5 Pro model. And looking back at PlayStation's consistent track record when it comes to mid-generation console upgrades, with the PS2, 3 and 4 all having either a slim or Pro model redesign within a three-year window of the original console's launch, a revised version of the PlayStation 5 is likely to release within the next year or two. And to further support these claims, reported by PlayStationLifestyle.net, it seems that dev kits for the PS5 and Xbox Series X mid-generation upgrades should be in developers' hands by no later than early 2023, making these rumours all the more likely to be true, not to mention the rumoured PlayStation 5 redesign featuring a detachable disk drive and an expected release of September 2023. It seems if you don't have a PlayStation 5 yet and wait just that bit longer, there'll be a few more iterations on the market, allowing you to better decide on a console to meet your home gaming desires. All in all, despite a few shortcomings, the PlayStation 5 is a phenomenal console for next generation gaming. And between its graphical capabilities, backwards compatibility, amazing exclusive games, and fast load times, the PS5 is the perfect addition to any gamer's collection. However, if you haven't managed to buy one over the last two years, at this point, with the high likeliness of a mid-generation redesign just around the corner, I think it's best to just wait that bit longer to see what these upcoming console redesigns have to offer. In saying that, the PlayStation 5 is already quite expensive, and any mid-generation redesign is likely to be even more pricey. So in the meantime, maybe your best option is to game on a budget whilst you save the extra cash. And if you're looking for 5 amazing budget PlayStation titles for under $10, then check out this video to find out more.